Hey everyone, Docwell here, and welcome to another one of my Dota 2 Hero Guides. Today we're going to be taking a look at Marcy. So Marcy is one of the newest heroes in Dota 2, and as such, she pretty much has two things that it seems like every hero that's new to Dota 2 has. The first thing that she has is she has a mobility spell. <laughs> pretty much every single hero has one of these, but also because of her mobility spell and because of the innate power of her skills, she is able to play every single position, one through five. We're going to be focusing on the four position Marcy, and that's largely because in the last patch, she was introduced into captain's mode, and so the pros started playing her, they started picking her in pro games, and they pretty much figured out that four position is the best position for this hero, and that's for two main reasons. One, even though she can play core, she doesn't have the best farming abilities, so she's kind of relegated to support in that way, even though she can play core, but because she has such good abilities, she really only needs a BKB, maybe one other item for support purposes, and she can dominate games. She can man fight people, she can initiate, you know, without even a blink dagger, she has lifesteal, she has all these things that make her just another core from the four position with very, very little farm because she just is so good innately. And so as such, we're going to be thinking about four position Marcy, focusing on four position Marcy, and seeing how to play her. So how do we think about her in general other than what I just described? Well, first, in the lane, she's a lane dominating hero. If there's a Marcy in the game, the enemy team has to be scared because she can just jump in, she can stun you, and she puts you out of position when she does stun you. So even if you're kind of far away from the creeps, you're a ranged hero, you're under your tower, you're still possibly going to die. You still are at threat compared to most other heroes. You know, most other heroes in the laning stage, they don't have a lot of levels yet. They can't really jump on top of you, even if it's like a Void Spirit, Storm Spirit, Puck. It's very hard for them to get in on top of you and stun you or lock you down and kill you. But that's not the case with Marcy. If she has any other kind of damage or stuns with her laning partner in the off lane, you are going to be very, very hard pressed to have a good lane against this hero. Then she can also roam to mid, help the mid out, dominate the mid lane, lane by just rotating and killing the mid by putting the mid out of position. She's just a great early game hero. And then later on in the game, even though she doesn't farm very well, she can just get maybe an Aether Lens, maybe a BKB, and just take over and become another core. And so later in the game, what does she do? Well, she is kind of an initiation hero. She always goes around ganking or starting team fights with usually one other hero that's strong. Usually it's the off laner, but it can be the mid laner, can kind of be anybody that wants to fight. She jumps in, she stuns people, you burst them down with your ult, and then especially if you have a BKB, you can just start wreaking havoc in the fight and it's usually a 4v5 from there. So that's the thing you want to be doing with Marcy is you want to be focusing on getting initiations. You don't want to be initiated on because she's not really a great counter initiator. You want to jump in on people and initiate on them. And then lastly, how do we think about the weaknesses of Marcy? Well, the weaknesses of Marcy are kind of few and far between. That's why she's such a good hero. But like a lot of other heroes, if you can silence her for a long duration, you know, stop her from when she jumps in from stunning you. So like a drow silence or something like that. If you can... Stun lock her full to zero because she is a tanky strength hero, some kind of stun through BKB, that can be very good. Or if you have a team that likes to initiate and has a lot of vision, if you snowball the game, don't allow her to jump in and get pickoffs, all of that. And in the laning stage, a hero that it's hard to man up against. It's hard to bring down. They're not squishy, potentially ranged. I know it's hard to get that kind of combo, but still, um, some kind of hero that can not be at threat when she jumps in on you. So that's kind of the key to playing against Marcy, but overall, she's just a very, very strong hero. So that's how to think about Marcy in general so now let's jump in and take a look at her abilities so now that we understand marcy in general we can take a look at her abilities and see how she's able to have that really good innate kit that allows her to do so much with just a few items or even no items and be that great lane dominator great initiation hero like i talked about so first we're going to take a look at dispose dispose is a pretty straightforward skill you just walk up to an enemy you grab them throw them over your head kind of do a suplex and you stun them and do damage it's really that straightforward it's that simple it is a kind of low range spell so keep that in mind she's a melee strength hero but it's just really really good not only because it stuns it does some damage but it puts them out of position so you can throw people under your own tower then they start hitting the you know the tower starts hitting them you can throw them out of position in the lane you can toss them out of position over cliffs whatever it is later in the game to initiate it's just a really really great spell now i will say i usually don't talk about items this early but if you buy aether lens it really really makes this spell so much better like look at the range there you can grab axe from super far away and throw him that's a lot more you know this range i don't know what it is in units but you can see how that can be super effective in team fights later in the game once you get this a bit uh this item you'll be able to throw people out of position pretty much constantly in fights it's also a pretty low cooldown spell so keep that in mind so dispose really really great stun really great for initiating um team fighting stunning in general 
Now, next we have Rebound. So Rebound is the reason why I have this other axe here, because this is going to be used in concert or in uh, tandem with an ally. You can use it on creeps, but usually you're going to want to use it on uh, an allied hero. And that's one thing about this hero, is you're almost always going to be wanting to play around your allies. And that's, that's another reason why she's a good support as well, because she doesn't really want to play independently. She wants to play around her teammates. So what you do is you just click this ability, then you click on your ally, and then you see like this other ring comes up. It's a vector targeting ability where you can kind of go anywhere from here. But what you're going to be doing is you're going to be jumping off of the back of your ally and then onto an enemy. So what you do is you jump off the axe, and then you jump onto this axe here, and then the axe is slowed, takes damage. Um, and then the other thing that happens is you might have seen it there really briefly. I'll put free spells on. Is that not only does it slow this enemy, but it also gives move speed to your allies. You can say you can see he's running around super fast here while this guy's slowed, which is just a great, you know, extra little thing that some people don't even know about the ability is that not only is this good for yourself to get out, so if you're going to get out of a situation, you can jump, you can rebound off of people, and then you, you know, rebound over cliffs, you escape really well, but then your ally is also running around super fast. Or, if they're a relatively slow hero, now they can catch up to you if you're initiating. So it's just a great all-around spell, has a little bit of everything in there. A really, really good spell. In tandem with a Dispose, where you can obviously jump in and then toss the guy. Now, you need to be careful what I just did there is I wasn't really thinking, and I tossed the enemy in the wrong direction. What you want to usually be doing is make sure, making sure you're kind of tossing them in the right direction. So you jump in on them, and then you toss them back to your allies. So that's pretty much how you want to make sure you're using this hero. You're not tossing them in the wrong direction. So just keep that in mind. Next, we're going to take a look at Sidekick. So Sidekick is kind of her, I guess, least, Im least important ability. It's really not that fun or it's not that like shocking or it's not something people really think about a lot but it is a very important ability because it gives you lifesteal and bonus damage so it doesn't only give that to yourself though it also gives it to an ally so you can actually click it on the axe here now you both get it so you both get that lifesteal you both get that damage and it's just really good overall to help your core out it just helps your core uh, do more damage in fights Lifesteal, survive a little bit more. She's just a great all-around hero for your cores to just be buffed up with that movement speed off of rebound with the lifesteal and the damage here. And then just keep in mind, you don't necessarily always need to click on the axe. You can also just double-click sidekick and it'll apply it to yourself and a random ally in this AoE. So if I click it here, axe just automatically gets it because he's the only ally that I have in this AoE, so just keep that in mind. If there are no ally heroes in the AoE, you'll just give it to yourself, but just keep that in mind. So that's Sidekick, pretty straightforward, pretty simple, but a generally overall good spell to buff up your ally core. Lastly, we're going to be taking a look at Unleash, and this is her ultimate. So this is kind of one of the abilities that allows her to just become another core later into the game when she just gets a BKB. She can man up on any hero with this Unleash ability. So what you do is you click it, and you just kind of go into this rage mode, and then you just punch people super, super quickly. So her attacks kind of come out in bursts, rather than, you know, over a consistent period of time, like uh, one after another, like most attacks. So you can see that she hits them a bunch, and then at the very end, there's kind of this wave that comes out. So that wave slows, and it does damage to people in an AoE. So this cancels Blink Daggers, does damage in an AoE, it slows everybody in an AoE, and obviously, if she has any other items, she will just be able to, like, during BKB, it's so hard to fight her. Like, as almost any hero, she does insane damage. So you can see if I buff myself up with the E while I have this. Um, I'm going to be doing insane damage to this axe uh, with just no items. Like, just Aether Lens is a level 14 axe. Obviously, he has no items either, but, like, this is an axe. He's supposed to be tanky. He's a strength hero. As you can tell, you know, you pop your unleash, you have your sidekick, even a couple levels in it. In the mid game, you jump in on a support. You even jump in on a squishy mid hero or something like that. You can just burst them down, man fight them, even within one dispose, um, it, they can't get away. They're slowed. It's super hard to deal with this hero. This hero is just so good. So really, like I said, you can honestly buy Aether Lens boots and BKB, and this hero is just absolutely insane. So that's Marcy. Honestly, that's all to really talk about. I think her um, Ags and Ag, Sept or Ag Scepter and Ag Shard aren't really that great. Nobody buys the Shard, and the Scepter really isn't like the best thing ever. It's not really too unique. Um, it's just that the uh, ultimate here has a much lower cooldown, which is really all it is. I mean, that's it's important, but you're really not going to be buying it as a support that much. It is good uh, as a core, but that's pretty much it. So 
that is Marcy. Those are her abilities. You can see how she's a great all-around hero, great for initiating, great for buffing up her team, and she can just man-fight people in the mid-game with only a couple items. So that's Marcy. Now let's jump in and take a look at how to play her in a game. So now we're jumping into a game here of Anna playing Marcy, actually. I know he's not really a support player, but well, this was, I thought this was a good game to kind of showcase this hero. So he actually held his skill point, decided which one to get first, either Dispose or Rebound. He ends up going for Rebound first, just because that gives you a little bit of extra movement speed. It gives you a slow. It allows his uh, Death Prophet to get more harassing, because just the stun level one is not going to be the best. I mean, it is good, so a lot of times you are going to want to go stun level one, but... He ends up deciding that rebound's best. And then once you get level 2, that's really the time when you're really, really strong. He's about to hit level 2 here in a second. But you can see, he's just spamming his rebound off cooldown. This is doing a lot of damage along with the Death Prophet here. And he actually gets a kill on the PL through Fog in the trees. And they get another kill here on the Marcy as well. Absolutely insane. He actually intentionally suicides to get full regen. I would not necessarily recommend doing that in your games, but it is something that he does. It is kind of a good play that higher MMR players will do. Unfortunately, all of that kind of chaos led to the death of the Death Prophet because they just had no resources when the enemy came back. But this is a good example right there of what you want to be doing as Marcy. Tossing people back into tower range. That's just the perfect thing to do. Whenever the creeps are pushed up, you know, whether the carry is trying to farm them or the support is trying to be aggressive on you, you want to try to look to dispose them back into tower range. It's a very, very good thing to do, something to learn on this hero as support because that's how you're going to kill people. And then you can see the PL was like full health and just with a little bit of help from the Death Prophet, he's able to jump in on this PL, use his rebound twice, and then dispose once, and the PL just dies from these spells. He's able to cancel the, uh, the Dawnbreaker's... Uh, mobility spell as well with his stun just absolutely insane what he's able to do here you can see how this is just so annoying to deal with it's the most annoying hero to lane against because you're constantly being slowed you're constantly taking damage he's throwing you out of position um canceling your <laughs> your channeled spells like the dawnbreaker has there and it's just super hard for them to deal with it uh unfortunately because it's almost like because they're getting so many kills in the lane, they constantly have low HP and resources where the enemy is constantly full HP and full mana which is interesting but Anytime the, right right there is the perfect example, anytime the enemies are up in your face, the lane is pushed, you want to be super aggressive with your spells because you're going to be doing tons of damage, put them out of uh, position, put them in range of tower, the tower to hit them, all that kind of stuff. Uh, very, very good in the lane to learn how to do all those things. But you're just going to be spamming these spells off cooldown and doing a ton of damage and be, being very annoying. I mean, it's really hard not to be good at this hero in the lane because this hero is just super OP. So that's Marcy in the laney stage, now let's jump into later in the game. Now I fast forwarded to about 10.30 here, and he just died, he's respawning, and so he's kind of coming out of the base and trying to look where he wants to go on the map, kind of see where he wants to go. So he sees bottom, they're going on Jug, unfortunately Jug does die, but the Bat Rider is a really, really strong hero right now. It's one of the strongest heroes in the mid-game um, after the laning stage, so he immediately runs to the Bat Rider, they do get a kill on this Wind Ranger, and then right afterwards they actually smoke up immediately to start running at the enemy, and this is what you want to do in the mid-game from probably the end of the laning stage till about 20-ish minutes. Pair up with your strong hero, whether that's the mid laner, the off laner, whoever is strong on your team that wants to be making plays, that wants to be aggressive on the map. Go with them, run around with them, sit behind them. You can see they immediately run mid. She disposes in, or rebounds in, and then disposes. Actually, she doesn't even need to because he uses, uh, Bat uses the, uh, the, uh, lasso there but you can see they get two kills they're super aggressive and then for the next like minute or so if we just watch this replay he kind of just camps this ward and sits around his bat or his death prophet whoever is strong on his team that doesn't want to just farm um bat tp top because bat has no lasso so bat's going to regen up uh, farm the jungle a little bit and now he's sitting behind his death prophet and this is just what you want to be doing like i said for the entirety of the mid game sit behind your hero get aggressive pick do uh go for side lane pickoffs with whatever hero is going to be aggressive and this is how you're going to be playing marcy you're not going to want to sit in lanes and defend them or to push out lanes in the way that a jakiro potentially would um heroes like that you're going to be a support that is always going to want to get aggressive because you are an initiation hero um, you don't just want to sit and try to farm waves and get your farm. That's not really how this hero plays. Now, you can, if nobody's doing anything on the map, if all three of your cores are farming jungle, sure, maybe push out a lane. Otherwise, sit behind the guy that's farming aggressively, sit behind the guy that's looking to make a play. And that's how you play Marcy in the mid-game. 
So I fast forwarded to about 25 minutes in the game here, and he buys Blink, he's almost done with his BKB. And the reason why I wanted to show you this is because Blink is very good, Aether Lens is obviously really good too, but Blink is very good because I want you to watch how he plays this fight. Um, because he uses his Blink so that he doesn't have to use his um, rebound to jump in. So he jumps in, disposes the Razorback, and then uses his, um, his rebound for the slow, but he's basically constantly waiting and resetting then to make sure that he can use his rebound to either get out or go back in if they need it. So he's always using his blink to initiate to then try to stun somebody. And he's kind of then resetting, waiting for his cooldowns to come back up. And then you can see there he blinked in, tried to get a stun, didn't work out. So he just jumped out. This is the perfect way to play this hero is he you're either going to want to jump in using your rebound if you don't have blink or blink in, try to stun somebody and then um, use your rebound to get out. So we can see right there, that's the perfect example. He kind of jumps in with his blink, looks for somebody to stun, there's no one to stun, so he kind of jumps out a little bit. And that's exactly how you want to be playing this hero in team fights. It's the perfect way, because it causes so much chaos. They have to constantly be worried if they're going to get jumped on by this Marcy. And you don't even need to necessarily have vision of them. You can saw, you can see how he was diving the tier 2 tower. So you kind of saw how he was doing that. And he didn't even have vision. He didn't even stun anybody. It was just the threat of that was forcing the enemy team to kind of play back. And so they ended up like dying four heroes, I think. The Wind Ranger was already dead, actually, because he killed the Wind Ranger, the Wind Ranger with the help of the... Um, of the uh, Enchantress there, but regardless, that's exactly how you want to be playing this hero in team fights in the mid game. Blinking in, stunning somebody, then potentially rebounding out. If you don't have blink, you want to rebound in, stun somebody, but you really want to be careful with that because you want to make sure you have a good initiation, but this is really an initiation hero first. So you can see on their team right now, the only initiation they have would be a bat blink, um, but bat either sometimes doesn't buy blink or doesn't love to just jump in with blink. So you can see bat doesn't even have a blink because bat knows that BKB is more important, you know, boots of travel, some of these damage items. This is kind of how a lot of bats play these days. So especially if you don't have any initiation, you need to make sure that you are the initiator on the team and that's exactly what marcy does in the mid game so that's exactly how to play marcy in the mid game you know be that initiator for your team blind initiate use rebound to escape buff up your team and then you can obviously alt and kill supports you can even man fight people uh cores in this case uh, if you end up isolating them so that's how to play marcy overall actually a pretty straightforward hero really easy in the early game just constantly use your spells in lane to get people out of position mid game play with your strong core and then later on in the game like this be that initiation hero for your team to get people out of position and pick people off um, like we see him doing constantly here so that's how to play marcy in general i hope this guide was helpful for you guys as always like comment subscribe all of those kinds of things if you want to see more videos like this into the future consider supporting me on patreon um, or you can actually go to patreon and get coaching in general if you want coaching as well join the discord if you haven't already and as always guys thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video